Normal radiation rates around here are about 0.1 microsievert per hour. I can use this thing as an altimeter too. When I go up in the airplane, it goes up to two microsieverts per hour. If I bring this U-238 here, we get quite a bit more. So we're going to talk about whether or not radiation should be feared as much as it really is. The problem with radiation is it's the root source of all the regulations, the expense, the public fear, and the opposition to nuclear power worldwide. You've seen this slide earlier today from George Erickson. The Nobel Prize was awarded to Mueller right after the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima in order to increase the fear that the world was going to fall into outright nuclear war. He lied, actually. He said there's no escape from the conclusion that there's no threshold dose, and he gave his example as low as 0.01 rad. Now, that happens to be, in today's world, a lethal dose, 400 rad. So that's, we're not talking about low-dose radiation, nor was he. This led to the concept of LNT, linear. People believed him, and he was supported in order to increase the fear of nuclear war. And yet, time after time, the National Academy of Sciences has reconvened the base biological committee on ionizing radiation and repeated the finding that a 100 millisievert dose of radiation will cause a 1% chance of contracting a cancer, and a half of that would be a chance of death. The New York Times reprints such nonsense. Here's an op-ed from the New York Times saying, just CT scans in a single year created 29,000 excess cancer and 14,000 deaths. The real answer is probably zero. This has led to excessive costs for regulatory affairs, environmental affairs, uh, the whole radiation protection industry and so on, to the extent that when we were applying to the NRC to try to license Thorcon, we were doing that in parallel with an audit by the GAO that concluded licensing a new technology like liquid fuel reactors would cost a billion dollars. That's the GAO report. These are the costs of the lie that is partly the subject of George Erickson's book title. Just a quick bit of math here. What is radiation dose? It's energy that's absorbed per kilogram of tissue. And the common unit is a gray, which is a joule, a watt second, per kilogram. And you'll also hear the word sievert. It's the same. Slow particles like alpha particles actually create more damage per uh, joule of energy. And so a sievert is the, uh, basically the equivalent amount of x-ray damage that an alpha would do. Natural background radiation doses are around 1 to 10 millisieverts per year. I showed you an example on that counter. But in our bodies, each of the cells has DNA, which is disrupted by radiation. Normally, these disruptions are created by reactive oxygen species, typically hydrogen peroxide, which is created by the ionization of water in your cell by the normal process of metabolism. The rate is approximately once per second per cell for all of the 100 trillion cells or so in your body. These are regularly replaced. The single strand breaks are trivially fixed because they're mirror images of each other. The double strand breaks happen about 10 times per cell per day. And background radiation about on the order of two or three millisieverts per year actually creates a, a few breaks per day per cell as well. These are repaired. There is repair processes that take place within the cell in a matter of a few hours. This is known science. Sciences were awarded the Nobel Prizes in chemistry two years ago for describing the mechanisms by which that is fixed. In Fukushima, the evacuation-related deaths because of the fear of the people enhanced by the government's evacuation order counted to about 1,600 according to the death certificates signed by the health boards.
The radiation, though, is harmless. Even UN Committee on Effects of Atomic Radiation said this, that there's hardly any and unlikely to see any. If we look at an IAEA publication about what to evacuate, the IAEA says, well, don't evacuate in such a hurry, you might hurt people. The IAEA would have evacuated the red area, but in fact, they wanted to evacuate the whole area where any radiation might have exceeded as much as 20 millisieverts per year photo from one of the IAE publications with the pregnant woman and the baby on the floor saying that level of radiation is safe for everyone, provided you're cautious about the food you eat. What hurts a lot is to have alpha radiation in you, right? Chernobyl, we read a lot about. 26 workers were killed fighting the fires. Children died of thyroid cancer. That's all true. There might have been 4,000 fatal cancers according to LNT, but not according to the evidence. The evidence says something different, and you never see this evidence publicized. Cancer rates went down. The National Academy of Sciences reported, well, first, the A-bomb survivors, there were about 100,000 people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki who survived, and their health has been followed studiously since then. They say, that, look, here are the cancer risks by radiation level. And look, they say, it's a straight line. Now, if I just blow up that straight line and look at it at low dose level, gee, you know, that level looks pretty close to zero to me at the bottom bar. I said, well, let me try it myself. It turns out the data is all public. It's a big spreadsheet. You just download it, do it yourself. I just add it up to get low dose cancer risks. Here in the group from zero to five millisieverts exposure from that bomb blast, there were 60,000 people and the cancer rate was 0.158. Normal cancer rates are what? Somewhere around there. Uh, and so here they are, 0 to 5, 5 to 20, and so on. And I look at this cancer rate on the right. It varies a bit. Here's a plot of it. Well, there's a straight line I just eyeballed there, the so-called LNT theory. But notice the first two boxes, other than the very low dose, seem to go downhill. 5 to 20, 20 to 40, that looks okay if you look at it. Why? I wonder if it's a statistical fluke. The number of cases in each of those, and look at the one standard deviation bars, we see that, well, you know, doesn't look too statistically fluky to me. It looks like it's going down. And in fact, most of the observations of those 19,000 people in those low dose areas, not the 6,000 people who are exposed to the higher doses that they claim creates the straight line that says low dose radiation. And in fact, in the publications in the journals, you'll notice that it all gets kind of blurry down there in the low dose area. So even though there's a lot of data down there, it's all hidden here. Let's look at medical treatments for just a second. Medical diagnostic radiation is really low, dental x-rays, CT scans, and so on, but therapeutic doses designed to kill cancer are much higher, and the doses are up to 80,000 millisieverts, but some of that radiation isn't gonna hit just the tumor, it's gonna be hitting the healthy tissue nearby, and so in order to make this work, the doctors divide the dose into maybe two or three weeks worth given at daily intervals. It gives the healthy tissue that is actually exposed to high levels time to recover. If it didn't work, fractionated radiation wouldn't cure cancer. And we do this thousands of times a day. There are thousands of papers that illustrate that LNT is wrong, literally thousands. Not by me, but by cancer oncologists, radiation physicists, biologists, people who have PhDs and MDs who are leading many radiation societies. It's safe and helpful. We're dealing with deception. Scientists for Accurate Radiation at radiationeffects.org has lots of these papers that you can read if you like. And in addition, Carol Marcus, one of our members, just for example, petitioned the NRC to change the rules to enable 50 to 100 millisievert limit for the whole population and to abolish the ALAR limit, the as low as reasonably achievable. We are getting a lot of pushback. For example, here's an, here's an extreme example. This is the kind of pushback we get. It, we, it's not a pushback against the facts. Look at, look at what the NRC Council, retired, says about our petition to the EPA. Pseudoscientific claptrap. 
Lyndon LaRouche, too goofy, ruinous to the reputation. Okay, this is ad hominem response. This is not dealing with the facts. So the NRC committee on this makes this sort of, well, it's more conservative, why don't we stick with what we got? XLNT.org, another place that has lots of examples. Here, we want to set the limits. We can confidently say that limits of around 100 millisievert, even in an acute dose, let alone per year, are likely to be hormetic, not harmful. The people on those committees ignore the thousands of papers. We publish refutations, they ignore them and don't publish. Their general research project is to try to look for harm. It's the Environmental Protection Agency, after all. The science is politicized. The bodies are self-appointing. We had members of our bodies uh, nominated for membership on the International Council for Radiation Protection, but they're not accepted as members because they disagree with the papers that are published by the existing members. And the people who proclaimed this loudly can't recant, they lose face. So here's the problems we're up against. And I implore you to try to spread the word and see if we can get some rationality into some of these regulation bodies. Thank you very much, Rob. Dr. Robert Hargraves, excellent work, sir.